Oh man, I got a few. I've just been reminiscing. Do you remember some of those childhood books like Winnie the Pooh, as we know? No offense, Sean Marco. Um, of course, the Rudyard Kipling's The Jungle Books, Roald Dahl, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I think some of those, those absolute classics that we've come um, to think about when we talk about those classic children's stories. Now, as part of International Children's Books Day, we're looking at turning these childhood love into a hobby. Now, avid collectors of children's picture books spend hours searching for original collectibles and special editions. Now Simon from Quacker Books is here to talk about his hobby and what sounds like it could be a potentially quite a valuable hobby but a very enjoyable hobby at that. Simon, I'm going to shake your hand and promise you that I'm not going to make you dance this morning. <laughs> um, but it, it really does awaken the imagination when you look at books. Books from our childhood. Obviously we live in a very modern, a very new media world. Why did you get drawn to collecting books, children's books? Well, I must say I'm not particularly a collector of children's books. I'm a dealer in books. So um, children's books are one of the genres in which we deal. And it's a fascinating one. I think, uh, you know, people collect children's books for various reasons. And perhaps one of the biggest ones is, is nostalgic reasons. Yeah. You know, they bring back your memories of childhood. Um, they're also very often particularly beautiful books uh, because they center around illustrations and they appeal to the senses in a, in a very tactile way something that we might have lost a little bit in the modern era now. So we know that a first edition is obviously going to be the holy grail. That's what you're looking out for. How do we identify? I know there are a lot of people right now looking at their bookcase going, mm -hmm. <laughs> how do we identify yeah. a first edition or for that matter, a valuable child's book? There, there, there really aren't many cut and dried rules, but, uh, but you know, there are a few pointers. Um, if, you, if you think of a first edition, you must always think, if it's a, a British author you're talking about, the British edition will be the sought-after one. If it's an American author, it would be the American edition. And then, of course, the first edition is the very first publication of that book, when it first became available to the market. And as any collector will tell you, that is always what they're searching for. You know, they're searching, it's the closest way to get to the author. And then... In addition to that, a first edition of the author's first book is usually even more the sought after. Prize, yeah. yeah. So, you know, uh, for example, something like like Harry Potter's book, uh, uh, J.K. Rowling's book, Harry Potter, the first, the first in that series is the most sought after one. Uh, how much would that go for? Uh, we sold a copy about two to three years ago for just under a hundred thousand rand. So um, hang on to those first editions. I'm loving the little pile of books you brought here. I um, mean, quite a diverse cross-section. Take us through the examples that you brought. Um, yeah, just a few. We didn't have a, a tremendous collection in, our, in stock at the moment. This is an interesting little one uh, with some lovely uh, engravings in it. Wow. 18, 18, uh, 1819, so nearly 200 years old. And just a, just a, a sort of probably fairly cheaply produced small children's book uh, of, of British origin, uh, kind of like a little, a little fairy sort of story. Taking into account its, it's wear and tear, obviously we understand yeah. it's nearly 200 years old, um, how much would this be worth? This is worth about 600 rand. Uh, sure. The condition is very poor and it's, it brings in something that is often the case with children's books uh, because they've been handled by children. <laughs> Probably and, through uh, about five generations. Yeah, so. I mean, there's a saying that says that, you know, a, a, a children's book in beautiful condition is actually quite a sad thing because it's never been appreciated or loved by a child. Okay, so, so lastly, um, just as, a, as a, a hint there to, to those wanting to start their own collection, how do we yeah. go about this? What do we need to be looking for? I think uh, advice to any collector is to be quite specific. So if you're interested in collecting children's books, that's fairly specific, but you could, you could look at collecting a particular author and try and get all their books. You could look at collecting a particular illustrator's work um, or a particular sort of time period, be it Victorian children's, children's books or 20th century children's books. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, we've got all of Simon's contact details on our Facebook page. You can catch up with them also on the Expresso website. A great new app coming out as well that will help you evaluate your book. So really watch what this man is doing very closely. All right, what's coming up next, Lee?